Hello and welcome back to the On The Slab, the only horror show that you need, the one that we bring to you each and every Friday night. Dynamo, why do we do it on a Friday night? The reason that we do it on Friday night is purely because, like all of us old school, old ass motherfuckers like me and Greg, <laughs> Friday night used to be horror night. And that's why we bring it to you on a Friday night, because Friday night is horror night. You've just finished school. You've come in after a long ass week. You've got your pizza. You went to the video store. You've got your favorite horrors. You're putting them on. And then guess what? You got a freebie on Channel 4. Boom. That's why God bless the end of the watershed. God bless the end of the watershed. As you can see, as you can see in the picture below, the title is Cryptid Pictures. This is a man that is seen quite as infrequently as the Bigfoot is these days. Welcome back, Mr. Dynamo. Yes, so I'm very, very happy to be here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been, um, some might say I've been squatch hunting, but I've just been more uh, squatch studying. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, <laughs> hence my disappearing act. No, it's good to have you back. It's good to good have to you back. back. Good to be back, brother. Yeah, no, it's been, a, as you know, a lot of stuff going on in the background. Uh, been a kind of busy couple time. of months, but um, <laughs> we're definitely definitely back for for the long haul here now so unfortunately or fortunately depending on who's looking and you're going to see my face uh, a lot more over the coming weeks <laughs> and as you can tell from the picture below it is not the king with us tonight this is mr jake robinson from cryptid pictures how are you sir i'm good how are y'all thank y'all for having me thanks for taking the time out to come on oh yeah Pleasure uh, this, to have you on, actually, because uh, Greg was filling me in and I've done my research on you and uh, you've got some very, very similar interests to myself and the G-Man, um, namely Bigfoot, ufology and everything in between. Um, so we will we will talk about some of your movies and some of your work, but one of the things I'm interested in, in hearing from you is A, Whereabouts in the States are you actually from? B, have you or I suppose people around you had experiences or any kind of sightings around the Bigfoot thing? And if not, this is a triple barrel question. If not, what actually got you into um, kind of the cryptoids and namely Big Squatch? We uh, I, I live in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I do most films throughout North Carolina, around Charlotte area. Rich um, country. Most Rick of my Flair country. Yeah, <laughs> most of my movies are are based off of of a story I've been told personally or something I've experienced. Like Wendigo uh, was based off of something I experienced as a child. Uh, they are here yes. off a story that my wife and her mom dealt with, like seeing something in the sky, and then. Um, the Bigfoot maybe I'm wanting to do, that's based off of uh, a town I used to live in in Kentucky, the Kentucky Massacre, where you had all these horses being like broken yep. and thrown yep. in the river and like they don't see no scratches, no bite marks. They're just nets, necks are snapped, thrown in the river. And it was just, yeah, it's just like they don't know how it happened. So I'm basing that Bigfoot maybe off of those. So I'll tell you what, take, take a big animal to break a horse's neck, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Fucking huge animals. <laughs> let's 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 talk let's talk about that a little bit purely because myself and Greg don't really get to talk about it a lot. Um we'll give a shout out to a certain podcast that we we kind of listen to a lot, which is obviously um Greg, do you wanna do you wanna say it so I don't have to DL, DL Sasquatch Chronicles and Wes Gomer li- over there in the States? Yeah. Shout out. He never gives us any love back though, even when we reach out to him. But it's all right, guys. <laughs> we know you're busy. We know you're busy. So we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna throw you under the bus. We'll give you a shout out on this one. Um it's it's crazy, isn't it? When you think about and I suppose this will I suppose lead back to what you do and what got you into um the well, movies that you make. For the um it, it it's kind of like one of those situations at this point where there's no smoke without fire because the same people that were shutting down, um, you know, the idea or the ideologies on UFOs being a possible thing um, were the same people that were shutting down the fact that, you know, 
Bigfoot's a possible thing, but I mean, it, it's a little bit more under the radar at the moment, but there is a lot, a lot of Bigfoot sightings at the moment. Um, shout out to a YouTube channel oh, yeah. you're probably familiar with, Tinker Tunker. Really good show. I would recommend it to anybody. Because I listened to Sascott's Chronicles uh, when I was doing my research for the Bigfoot movie. Uh, the, that story came up for the Kentucky Massacre. And I'm like, oh, I remember that. <laughs> and I never knew it was uh, tied to Bigfoot. So that makes it even better. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, I tell you what, though, like some of the stories you hear on that are absolutely terrifying. Now, so, some, yeah. of them, some of them are a bit ridiculous. Uh, and you can you take the good with the bad, yeah. but um, like when you hear stories like that, I actually listened to that Kentucky Massacre yeah. one. Yeah, that's uh, pretty. It's pretty good. It's, it's a that was a while ago now that one came out. Yeah, like sometimes you get some like you get some absolute you know lunatics of like I was sitting there <laughs> having a picnic and a big <laughs> squatch just came out of the water and it's like <laughs> well it's a lake. <laughs> <laughs> he took my fish and he went back in the lake and you're like all right that's that's probably <laughs> never happened to be fair <laughs> but you know there's some great some y'all great see the big project the what the witch you all see that new be on tubi of the bigfoot project no no it's pretty uh it's like a hilarious Curious Bigfoot movie, but it's like the over dramatic like stereotypes of rednecks is is just hilarious. What you remember? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so well, that's it. Yeah, gotta check it out. Anybody, oh, anybody yeah. that thinks of an Irishman doing an impression of rednecks, Greg knows me better than anybody. Oh, I fucking love rednecks. So it's with love. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that no, me, no, offense, no offense needed here. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. No, 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 I don't take it offense at all. I mean, the movie I'm doing next week, uh, it's a bunch of aliens go- going against rednecks. So it's like, it's pretty <laughs> yes. funny. <laughs> yes. Who that's, wins? That's, that's, so the, la- the last one, we, the closest we got to that was Cockney versus Zombies, which would have been a London versus Zombies movie. And yeah. <laughs> And spoiler alert, the narrative is, who are the real aliens? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, he just puts a spanner in the works here. Um. So, yeah, you were saying, so you have a Bigfoot movie in the process of, of coming out or being made. Um, yeah. You well, then... We're looking to do that soon. And then you, you, you just mentioned there that you have one coming out called uh, They're Here, which is obviously quite relevant to this moment in time where there's alien sightings left, right, and center. Yeah. So, uh, my first movie that will be coming out that's been picked up would be The Wendigo, and it'll be on most streaming platforms. Uh, I, and I'm filming my next feature next week, which is They're Here, which is another found footage movie about aliens. And then after that, I'm filming in April uh, a slasher found footage movie called Be My Friend. And oh, nice. after that, I like that. I'll like be name. right. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's his youth name, and he ends up stalking these YouTubers. Uh, he just wants to be their friend, but he's just twisted and sick and starts uh, kidnapping and killing everybody. It's, it's pretty demented. So, <laughs> uh, And then after that, I'll be going to production for uh another film called attachment and then once we wrap that we'll be tackling the uh the bigfoot movie uh i'm just currently in the process of making the bigfoot suit i want it to be a classic kind of look but i want it to be really super realistic uh for an independent film budget i want it to be the best i can do how do you how do you do that Uh, uh, because i do we definitely want to come back to dare here but that's a really good point, you know, in terms of doing a Sasquatch movie and in terms of how you want it to be realistic, because, you know, we don't have any, technically we have Paddy, which is, in my opinion, 100% real. I, I have no doubt whatsoever that, I mean, you're talking in what, mid, <laughs> early 60s, in the, you know, four hours, you know, up the road, it's very difficult to, to, 
you know, I mean, you can see Paddy's arse cheeks moving and everything. It's to me, if it's a hoax, it's the best hoax I've ever seen in <laughs> anything. Um, ever. ever. Uh, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, uh, that, that's better than um, than the crop signs and everything. If that's without really a shadow of a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt. But in terms of, so you're looking for a guy that looks like Greg here, you know. But you know, <laughs> I mean, even 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 as big as Greg is, he's still six three, six four. He's not quite the. You know, I'm, I'm quite, only I'm only six only six one. Six one ah, oh, so you see, you've got a short guy now. <laughs> six six one two thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Six one two thirty. So, like, when you're looking for a guy, you know, to, to to kind of do it, are you? Because obviously, like you mentioned, you're not into CGI. Um, how are you? How are you doing this? Are you are you giving the big show? Uh, so the the actor I'm looking at. Uh, well, the actor I am talking to, he's over seven feet tall. Uh, and then nice. the suit. Uh, the suit I'm getting. Uh, he's really tall and lanky, but the suit I'm making, it's going to have a muscle suit. And then the uh, makeup. Oh, folks, we're applying the hair. Uh, we're applying the hair. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, uh, we're going to be punching the hair on the muscle suit to make it more realistic. Um, and then as far as is how he's going to act is I'm kind of basing it off of a uh, the Native American stories where they had a tribe that was kidnapping other tribe members and they always described them as big, red, hairy figures uh, that would just go around and kidnap people. So my, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Apart from the kidnapping. Yeah. So my Bigfoot, he, he's going to be a lot more intelligent as, uh, than most Bigfoot movies. Like he, he's going to be setting traps. Uh, he's going to be hunting oh, yeah. them. Uh, he's going to have like made out of stone and like wood. Like he's going to be, I'm trying to make him a little more terrifying than just a hairy man in the woods. So you're, you're basically um, basing him well, on yeah, that's reality. The, you're basing him on reality essentially because yeah. that's because everything they're very also, intelligent creatures. Yeah. Yeah. Everything always goes back to Native American stories. Um, yeah. I that's agree. why I love when uh and even even like paranormal stuff they always believe that bigfoot has a foot in the spirit realm and they always believe that bigfoot like the way the stories came about it just sounds like they're describing a tribe of bigfoots that just would kidnap everybody and so and even a lot of the ufo stuff it just everything seems to go back to native american origins and that's why wendigo was my favorite movie to do because it just, I feel like it's a way to connect everything. So ju just before we, we get on to the Wendigo there, you're saying you're basing um, the Bigfoot obviously being extremely big, strong and smart. So you're, you're, you're pretty much taking the Predator and the Bigfoot from Harry and the Hendersons and combining them. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be about right. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, yeah, he basically be a, uh, more so that just ain't gonna be goofy looking, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. But see that's that's the problem. Like uh Eduardo Sanchez done probably the only half decent Bigfoot movie where it exists. Yep. Um we've had a lot a, of yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. Um, yeah. I big, Bigfoot as far as Bigfoot movies exists until mine comes out, respectfully. Uh exists is the best one out there. Uh, yeah. uh Especially for found footage, uh, I think is this is the best one out there. And my buddy uh, Dylan Brown from Horror Dads, he made a very good Bigfoot movie too called Tahoe Joe. That is a uh, pretty decent. That's out on Tubi as well. It's uh, something we, that uh, myself and that. Greg were actually talking about that we like. We were saying there's not a lot of, you know, there's a lot of interest in Bigfoot and Sasquatch because again, we're not talking about the Loch Ness monster here. You know what I mean? Where we all pretty much yeah. know that there ain't no fucking plachiosaurus or whatever, you know, at the bottom of a Scottish lake. But with Bigfoot, there's just way too much different variations of sightings and different types of, um, you know, I I actually had, um, and, and I'm sure you know who this guy is, Jay, uh, Todd Standing. I know he's not, he's got a 
pretty bad rap for his sightings, but Todd Stanton is, um, I mean, he's got probably, if they are legitimate videos, they are the best videos pretty much of all time. Greg, you know who I'm talking about. Absolutely, um, it was a good show as well. <laughs> had him on my had him on the show. Um, it was on it was on Netflix for a while. It was called Finding Bigfoot, and then all of a sudden, it was yanked off the goddamn chain because they were, they just had him down as a kook. But I mean, I'll give you one example. <laughs> one of the actual sightings that they had was a Bigfoot blinking, and a mosquito comes down on his nose and literally goes off his nose and you can actually see if you're looking at it in slow motion you can see the little drops of blood I'm like this guy has no money behind him <laughs> it, yeah. CGI this is legitimate like this is a guy who was you know former military and knows how to track knows how to hunt knows how to do whatever and uh, it, it was a really really incredible uh, documentary I, I'd, I'd implore people to go out and watch it um, and I, I don't want to spend too much time on because I know you're you're a guest here, but um, it's it's just if if no one's familiar with Tom Stanton, please go and check him out because it's 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 as good of evidence, you know, or as close to, you know, what. We, and the funny thing about it is the videos that he has, they look like Paddy, which is also scary. You know what I mean? Like the the facial structure, if you were to kind of put what way Paddy looks like. It's not this big, pretty looking thing. It's just a big, hairy, fucking ugly face, basically. Yeah. Um, so it's so, so, something like that even might help your process in making. I know you have your way that you want them to be, but like something like that, you know, where you see certain videos that yeah. you might have seen yeah. or you've spoken to, and then you see something being done in one video, and you're like, oh, that could work. So yeah, like I know as far as his face, I don't want to do I want him to look more humanoid. I don't want to do the whole ape thing, uh, where he has oh, a certain nice, kind of nice. nose, where he has a certain kind of nose. they don't look they don't look humanoid or ape, should I say. They don't look ape like yeah. Yeah, so I want to find a nice blend of it this like it would be standing upright like I mean, gorillas don't really stand upright all the time i mean they walk on all fours most of the time uh but it's just i want I, when i when i do it i just don't want them to be, look too much like an ape or a primate or anything i, I want them to be more human like because i my theory is I, I believe they're giants from the bible that are still around so <laughs> thank you sir so do we Fair yeah enough. that's my Fair can, can we before we go on, can people we talk can we, about? I'm like, because I'm, I'm a. Yeah, let's let's talk about that for a second, Jay, because it's uh, it's true. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, um, I think it was in Mexico. You can you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was in Mexico, or it was definitely in South America, anyway, where there were many many pits found with femur bones that were literally the length of almost human bodies that were all buried and burned, um, which they reckon were you know hundreds of thousands of years ago and uh, they called them the giant people and i mean this is legit like i mean they, they were yeah. actual femur bones you know of 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 real living things and um, it wasn't just andre the giant was it no. The <laughs> no 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 he was a freak of nature that's the thing um, and yeah. so it's uh it, it, it's pretty it's pretty crazy when you think about it i'm glad you brought that up there because um you you can you can talk about it a little bit if you want there because it was uh yeah i mean i'm a preacher's kid uh so like, i know the bible uh always like taking everything like a grain of salt when i read some of the scriptures like how like it talks about the serpent will forever be on its belly and i'm like so that means it was standing up so i was just sitting there thinking that's dinosaurs. <laughs> that was my whole theory in the garden. It was a dinosaur talk Adam and Eve and stuff like that. Um, and then I believe that we still have some giants that are alive from those times because I mean, I believe in the Bible. So I believe whatever was told in there was, is true. So, and that's why I believe in everything else is we can't have this higher power, but not have anything else like going on. It, 
just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, so that's why I believe in most of these cryptids. The only one I, I don't necessarily believe in is Mothman, but everything else I have a strong uh, belief for him. Um, the Mothman one, I remember watching the Richard Gere film. Yes. That's the very first time I I came across that because we don't have don't anything have like that. Um, and I remember looking into it and I was like, there's just something strange about it. It's like, I, I was listening to a podcast and they said that it, it's like the angel of um, death, maybe, or something mm-hmm. that's coming to do it. Because they kept mentioning a name. I can't remember what the name was now, mind you, but um, it was basically saying the Mothman was an angel or whatever. Now, I'm not a religious person at all. Um, so I was kind of like, nah, that doesn't do it for me. But um, I hope If I believed in Mothman, it, I would definitely would go the route if it's a fallen angel. Uh, it, like, I don't, still don't know where people get this whole moth thing from, like, unless they just take the red eyes to heart, but... Yeah, well, much I believe that there is something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, so yes. like touching on that there. So the Mothman uh, was the first part of the cryptid verse that you've done, is it? Was that be right? Uh, so uh, the first maybe part of it was the flock. Uh, oh, the, the flock. Sorry, the flock. Yeah. The first maybe is the flock to kind of start it. Uh, the second maybe will be the Mothman. Uh, which is in both of those are already out. Uh, they're out on TV currently. Uh, I really uh, wish we had this chubby. Um, and then the third maybe will be yeah. the. Y'all don't have two there. No. Nope. All right. Let me talk to the director. See if I can get y'all somehow to watch it. So I'm gonna find y'all a way to watch it. I like sure. this guy. I like this guy. <laughs> me too. Um, so, yeah. Then, um, then obviously, yeah. friend friend of the show, Jenny Morrow's in in. The Mothman. Yeah. He actually he was the one who pointed me to it. And um, when we done an episode with him a while back. Uh, he's a really good guy. Oh yeah, I love him. I'm I'm talking to him for another project in a couple of years that uh, I think he'll be good. Uh he just he does creepy well and I like him. So <laughs> uh, he's he's sound as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's got a great voice. Like when he turns it on, it's like yeah. that guy so <laughs> but yeah the wendigo will be the third movie a part of that and then the sequel uh i'm already planning a sequel to the wendigo uh that i'm going to try to do next w- year as well with a bigger budget and then have a more true um look of the wendigo because when people see this movie they're going to be like well that's not accurate which I'd explain to people is I'm basing it off of like the Wendigo was a native American warrior spirit. So what you're seeing him in the movie is not his skin. That's his armor and his camouflage. Mm. So when you see like the antlers and the skull, that's his helmet. That's not even his face. No, it's an, and I, so I like in the sequel, I'm going to have, yeah. Cause a lot of people are like, he doesn't look accurate. And I was like, well, the, has a, his real self is under all that so in the sequel he kind of sheds all of it and he has the more pale no antlers like long he just looks like a corpse walking around that just is super fast eats everything and has a uh a hunger that he will never quench so are you gonna go more so off say the ravenous kind of look where they had robert carlisle as the windigo uh, well, I'm actually going to have mine more based off of Until Dawn because Until Dawn's is the uh, it's a video game. It's the most accurate uh, yeah, depiction. It's the creepiest folk video game too. Yeah, they are the most accurate depiction of the Wendigo. That's what they truly look like because um, they don't have antlers or anything. That just kind of was a pop culture thing throughout the years that everybody added. But uh, after talking to real Native Americans and indigenous people to help with my story, uh, they're the ones that kind of helped me with the design. And once I pitched them that, they were like, well, uh, a lot of Native American warriors would wear skulls with ants to like blend in when they hunt. And I'm like, oh, 
So I started adding that. And so a lot of people, once I tell them that, they're like, oh, now they get it. They're like, oh, it's this camouflage. I was like, yeah, more so. So it's a, it's a, it's a really good idea and a, and a good way to blend it in. Um, mm. Mm. And obviously you can see by the jumper there, you have it basically with the antlers on the W, which is great. Kind of, it's kind of Blair Witch-esque as well. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the suit, I wanted him to look like a tree because a lot of the stories I based it off of, they said he's one with the land. So he's throughout the movie and you got to look for him. He's always in the trees and he blends in throughout the movie and you just got to look for him. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there and you probably don't have it, but if he's always in the trees and you don't have a clip of Mac from Predator going, I see you in the trees. I'm not watching it. I don't have it. I'm sorry, but I got something that might pop that. I'll still watch it. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, like I love those kind of horror movies. And as he says, like he's going to be in the trees and whatnot. You always have to look for him. So he's hidden in plain sight all the time. Yeah, you just got to look for him. And like you just, like you'll pan and you're like, wait was like something there like because the helmet gives it away but it's just he's just blending in because i i chose uh a late february where all the trees are i think we've lost them this time folks we do have to apologize about the connection um it's out of air control (laughs) very good i actually have this Oh. oh, I can see what he's bringing in. This is the. Oh, nice. That yeah, because his antlers, they're branches. Yeah, I suppose you're not probably not allowed to use proper bone, are you? Well, no. <laughs> no. Nah. Well, I want to be well, safe with it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had a uh, professional cosplayer make this in two weeks in the whole suit out of just foam. Uh, and it That's just cool. the way the other make, yeah, they brought it to life, but like adding all these like mushrooms and like vegetation to the branches, and uh, it was just really cool to really make it more realistic with my vision, where he's more so of like blending in with the environment so you like what you're seeing is not antlers, it's just tree branches and stuff. Oh, like that. That's pretty cool, I like that idea. Let's uh, I have um, yeah, I just I'll, different. I'll, Go ahead. I said, I just wanted to be different than everybody. Just like, oh, he's just going to have antlers and a skull head. I'm like, I want to put my own twist on it and stuff like that. I like it. I have a, I have a couple of questions based on uh, there here, because I'm I'm pretty interested okay. in this. Um, I'm, I'm what's, what's kind of really cool about that is we've seen so many different UFO movies. Um, again, we're getting into the realm of not a lot of them being done very well, in my opinion. Um, the fifth kind mm. was, or the fourth kind, wasn't it? Sorry, fourth kind, yeah. Um, Ray yeah, it was, was, yeah, it was. It was okay. It was, you, you know, it was okay. It was okay for me. I think it was still overrated. Um, Dark I mean, skies was terrible. Fire in the sky was okay again because it was based on, uh, you know. Travis Walton's, you know, real life experience, but he's also admitted that they kind of Hollywooded it up a little bit, but it was, again, it was okay. Um, There's never been a really great UFO movie without them going over the top. And it must be really, Greg. I I have one for you. You said it's a found footage, didn't you? Mm -hmm. There here is going to be found footage. Um, talking about the original one in the eighties, you're talking about the, the, the McPherson, McPherson uh, tapes, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that no, that's 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 that, this is where I was actually going with that. Oh, that's okay. my <laughs> that's my favorite purely because it's what you don't see, you know, the fucking red lights and everything, the noise. Yeah, it's, it's what you don't see, like. But now, I think we're at a J. Like we're at a point now where. Like they're basically coming out and saying, "Well, yeah, uh, the U.S. military don't know what these Tic Tac UFOs are. They don't know what these are." Like, I mean, and you've got actual video evidence from pilots where pilots are going, 
these things are not from this planet. We know because we know what we can fly on this planet and what we can't. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, thank God for Joe Rogan is all I'll say. <laughs> because, gosh, without, man, he... because without Joe Rogan, we wouldn't get to half the fucking bottom of, 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 what the, uh, of what would be shared with us. What do you think about the whole thing? Uh, I think it's great publicity for my movie next week. Uh, so. Yeah, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I think uh, I just think it's just it's an amazing time to where uh, we've been through all years, all these years. Me as a child, government denying this, government denying that. No, that's that's fake. That's fake. To well, all of a sudden they're like, yeah they're aliens they're ufos and you're just like what is going on it's a bit it creepy. Just, it, it, and, and the poor guy what's his name who used to work in area 51 for god's sakes he came out and he had the element element 51 or element 56 what what was his name again he was in joe rogan i know who you're talking about and i watched the episode i cannot remember his name i'm yeah, bad his with name names just, his name is <laughs> i'll get it for you i'll get it for you but uh yeah that's i mean that poor yeah, guy, it, but his whole life was literally erased because he came out back in the nineties and said this. His whole life was erased. Yeah, you know, I'm so saying nuts with all this, but yeah, it just uh, for me in a way, it's, it's Bob a Lazar. Bit... Bob Lazar. There we go. Bob Lazar. Shout out to Bob Lazar, my man. <laughs> stuck with it. Stuck with it. Truth to him. <laughs> But I mean, Bob Lazar talked about it as well. And he was like, he was a scientist, is a scientist, not was, is a scientist who literally was like, we do not have the capability to do what these things do. And he wasn't coming out saying that they were little gray men or little green men or anything like that. He was coming out saying, I'm telling you, we are reverse engineering things that the Nazis actually had the first dibs on back in the back in the 40s, which is actually kind of scary. When you think about it, right? Um, and then then we brought all the Nazis over to, you know, well, the good ones, should I say, to, to, uh -huh. to work on, to work, what, what they considered were good ones to um, to work on this, this technology that was, I mean, apparently been around for centuries. It's kind of creepy, isn't it? When you think that we look at all the old Egyptian and um, Aztec, you know, writings and, and murals, and like you can actually see in plain sight what they're drawn on the Describe walls it. and what they were witnessing. Mm -hmm. I mean, every, everything that's happening right now has to just be money, money signs for you going, this couldn't have come at a better time. I know. Definitely. I mean, I posted about it today. I was like, I picked, I picked a really good time to make an alien movie. And everybody I've seen was like, that, yeah. 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 Because if like, you'd done it in two years, you'd be too late. <laughs> yeah. And that's how I felt about Slender Man when they Sony bought it and made a movie like five years too late. I'm like, you missed your opportunity. No one cared. Yeah. So, it was fucking shocking as well. It was. I know. Yeah. Keep up a creepy pasta if you're going to use their stories, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, too. They use the same plot as the ring. Yeah. It's yeah. Like if you watch a video, it comes for you in a few days. I'm like, that's the same plot as the ring seven days i'm like y'all copied it <laughs> yeah and that's the thing about and i'm gonna i'm gonna say y'all as well because i like that um american fucking especially mainstream american tv they tend to just look at the j horrors and go oh yeah we'll just take a bit of that we'll take a bit of this we'll take a bit of that because i mean you mentioned Ring. you mentioned the ring there i mean ringu is still scarier than anything hollywood can oh, yeah. produce anything the atmosphere yeah. in that movie the whole suspense every time it goes to a different day and it's like Jum, you're due on as well oh due on as well oh my days man I it's think just scariest, so much better i think the scariest asian or japanese horror was it was pulse but not the one with christian bell the the real one that yeah, pulse, that was pulse the most was christian but the thing was terrible yeah, but the real version that they did the reboot for, uh, it was a real like Japanese horror movie or an Asian. So don't quote me. I'm, I apologize, but the real version of that was terrifying. 
um, just the whole fact of the ghosts bleeding out of the walls, and it was just, ugh, it just yeah. that movie. I agree. I agree. Um, Jay Har, Jay Har, we've said it before. Jay Har is probably the best in the business, really. I think um, so. Oh, yeah. When they get it, when they get it right, it's better than anything that anyone's produced in a long. long I would time. say, I would say a little, a little caveat here. I know getting off topic, but just a little shout out from me. Um, I'm also a big fan of European horror. I mean, we all know the Argento stuff and all that is great, and the Italian stuff is great. But a very, very underrated genre is also the Spanish and French. Oh yeah, we yeah we brought that up a while back, didn't we? Um, very underrated. Rec- Wreck yeah. was phenomenal. Rec, and then I mean, he went even, yeah. quarantine. Even yeah, the Rec. Spanish orphanage Rec. fucking, you know. Del Toro. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Um, Del Toro knows how to make horror movies. Uh, he, he, I hate that people give him a lot of flack because of all of his other ones. I'm just like, he, he makes some amazing horror movies. Yep. Absolutely. The orphanage is phenomenal. The Orphanage mm. is one of the best. I mean, it's one of the... Cre- See, here, here's one for you, Jay, right? The, and what I like about you is that you, you've already, you're into your cryptoids and stuff like that, but quite clearly we can see that you're also into your slasher because mm-hmm. you've got my man right behind you there, Michael Myers. Yeah. Chilling. Big Mike. Um, Big Mike is my guy. Everyone, anyone that knows me knows that. But the thing about it is, it, it just, it really depends on your mood. So when someone says... A horror movie the, just like a romantic comedy or an action movie or anything there's so many different subgenres within the horror mm-hmm. is there? so you can be into your slasher I, I, what do you want to be do you want to get scared right do you want to be legitimately scared do you want to you know so the, the point i'm making is the orphanage is a perfect perfect example of a movie where you're like that's suspense it's almost thriller-esque yeah rather than straight up you know yeah there's, there's no real killed. subgenre to it exactly exactly and when um, you yeah. when you're when you're making a movie like what what way when you're making a movie say you're going from there here to you know whatever other movie you're making what what way are you trying to differentiate them from you know your previous one do you get me yeah, no, I got you. Uh, Wendigo, uh, I wanted it to be, um, I wanted to kind of let the audience in on like a real life experience of mine. Like what I experienced as a child is a scene in the movie uh, and the characters in the movie experience what I dealt with as a child. Um, so I wanted to go. Uh, so when I was a kid, I, uh, I was just out in the woods playing and everything and i thought i heard something in the woods and i call out for like my brother and i hear myself call back out to me i don't hear another voice saying my brother's name matt so i was going matt and so i was hearing my voice say the same thing calling back out to me not like an echo it was like Mm. like 12 15 seconds that passed by before i heard it again I never knew what that was, and I just get, I kind of got the hell out of there. But <laughs> yeah, when I got older, and like internet came out and everything, you can search online. I was just searching up like stuff like that, and uh, part of the Wendigo lore is he can mimic voices. Oh. and they're meant to be able to do it to a T. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like mimic it like the Predator, and the Predator, from what I'm reading, is kind of based off the Wendigo. Oh, uh, it seems that so, way. Yeah. It, yeah, a lot of the more I did research for Wendigo, the more I was like, this is straight up Predator. <laughs> um, and it just like, like I said, everything always goes back to Native American stuff. It's like everybody bases so much stuff off of these stories. And that's why anything Native American, like lore and legends, I'm a I'm 100% believer, especially they after know. I did. they know <laughs> they do. They do. And they mind yeah, they, business. They know, they know what the fuck is up. <laughs> They know exactly what's up. I mean, don't forget, like when we talk about Sasquatch and stuff like that, I mean, these people, indigenous people, but also very, very intelligent people. And they also knew, don't forget what, what, what now you can correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't their interpretation of um, UFOs, they called them the star people? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. 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 It's like, I don't know. I don't know too much about their stuff, how they interpret it, all the UFO stuff. 
but I do know they have their own thing for UFOs and like the people that uh, I think they called them the tall man stuff like that. Well, like put it, put it they, this way, we, if we if we hadn't have come over as in us Europeans yeah. and taken their land off them, we'd be talking about the same kind of um, you know that they're, they're, they're they're going back to Egyptian times. You know what I mean? Like they're a long line of indigenous people that. You know, and that, I mean, America is absolutely humongous. So there were so many different tribes and different people and still is obviously to this day, which is great that there are still yeah. a lot of um, natives still, you know, living in, in the States, but they are still clued in to what their forefathers and, you know, people, yeah. people taught them. So it's, it's, it's really because cool their land first they could have seen some of the oldest things that were on earth still there um and i just feel like the more we populated and the more we build things we're like pushing a lot of these supernatural things further out to where it's not so populated that's why like bigfoot sightings i feel like they they fluctuate like because like we're always growing as a society and building and building and building and i just feel like we're pushing all these entities out and that's why a lot of these sightings are not as they used to be but it's just crazy yeah, how you, like you, you drop it like picking up <laughs> i i had a i had a, a, a debate with a guy in work the other day it's like yeah well you know, <laughs> the, if there was if there was bigfoots like i mean quite clearly they'd be found and i was like i'll tell you what why don't you get on a chopper and just pack a little bag and go up into the canadian woods or go up into the into the ozarks as they call them and see if you can make your way out of those woods alive on your own considering that there's not much planet left to be uh, to be explored see how well you do long long way out of those jungles and woods Forget yeah. about it. But Forget the, about the thing it. is, though, I, you, I you, believe how Bigfoot travels is the hollow earth theory. I think it so. I think, I think caves, caves, man. Caves. That's what I was saying. They're like, we would see more of them. I'm like, they're intelligent and they know. And I just feel like the more society like grew, we pushed them more underground. And But it doesn't mean that they're not there. It's just... But that's why we see so many weird sightings of it. It's just they're popping in theory. and out all over the world using this tunnel. I have a theory that's going to sell your movie for you, just for our audience. <laughs> right? They're here. They're here. Personally, and, and legitimately, I thought about this. Um, and I can't, I can't take full credit for it because a, a cousin of mine is very, very deep when it comes to this stuff. But I thought about it. I think that they are the original inhabitants of this planet and that we are some sort of experiment that came from somewhere else. And we <laughs> were put we here. don't need them. Because think about it. It's think funny about, that you brought that up. Think about it this way, right? It's funny think you brought that up. Think about it this way. Before, before you come in there, Jay, think about it this way. We're the only animal on the planet that kills for pleasure. We are human beings. Every other animal kills to eat. We're the Bears only one that kill kills for sport. for sport. But they eat. Yeah, yeah they don't. They yeah, don't eat like, everything they kill, though. Yeah, but uh, we're me the only. Mike were driving you know yesterday. I mean. We were yeah, driving we yesterday. Hunt. I'm sorry. It is a lag. I apologize. I'm not trying to talk over y'all. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. Oh. Um, Yesterday, me and my wife was on a two-hour drive, and we was talking about how um, there's evidence, like with Mars, that shows like there was life at some point. And uh, there's a theory going on why it takes so long for babies to walk, and why pe women, when they're in labor, there's so much of a death rate of it because we're not uh, adapting to the atmosphere like we should. And uh, like, we're not the original inhabitants of Earth. Like we came from Mars is, was what we was talking about. And this is like some real study that they're, they're coming out with. But it was just funny you brought that up because we literally just had this conversation yesterday about how 
she we're thinking that we're not the original people uh but animals were original but we're not and that's why animals they got their own little uh, like triangle thing that they deal with but i i just believe that i just thought this was pretty neat that's why bigfoot doesn't want to be seen you know because he knows mm -hmm. or they know that uh their forefathers and their fucking people were killed by us yeah they know that we're more dangerous I, than them i believe i'm just saying that like, you've never seen me and bigfoot in the same room i'm just <laughs> saying i'm throwing that out there i don't know greg i think i think you know go back to your family tree here <laughs> <laughs> now they're all bald as fuck <laughs> yeah but the face is the face <laughs> I've got one for you then, right? So obviously we've gone through the movies that you have and the cryptid verse, right? And we're talking about Native Americans. When when are you going to get us a Skinwalker movie? Uh, I've had you're not the first one to ask. Uh, after people who watch Wendigo, they're like, I think you can do a really good Skinwalker uh, because I'm, they're creepy as fuck. Oh yeah, they're they're much darker. Um, and also uh, Native American. There we go. Uh, yeah. They're much darker because when I was doing research for Wendigo, a lot of skinwalker lore came up and what they do to, to gain that power and everything is just demonic. Like they sacrifice babies. It's a dark, dark, dark magic that they practice. No, we're talk we're practice. not talking about Hollywood here. We're talking about skinwalkers. <laughs> <laughs> good one. That's a good what one. Think they got that that was a good one. <laughs> um. No, like I, I watched. Oh, intriguing. And then, right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened there, but we, we dropped out. So, um, yeah. So, like, skinwalkers are creepy as fuck. Simple as that. <laughs> uh, no, we see, we seem to have lost voice now. <laughs> Um, and sorry again, folks. This is a this is a connection issue. <laughs> We're live, pal. Uh, Can you but, hear me um, now? Oh yeah, there we go. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what happened. Happen. happened. Um, <laughs> uh, we're we're in the we're in the middle of winding down now. Anyway, um, just as it says, just want to take thank you for taking the time to come on and. Uh, let, to, to promote the movies and then once we get a chance to watch them we'll certainly go on and, and do an episode on them um, and whatnot. And don't let's be that fair we're, where, um, we're, we're, we're pretty brutally honest <laughs> so tell us where um, tell us where people can find you on your socials and, and, and where they need to look for your movies if they're over in Europe and they're interested in watching um, all the uh, all the work that you've put out tonight <laughs> I got a uh, I got a Facebook page called Cryptid Pictures. Uh, it's a it's a Facebook page that you can like and follow. It's where we do most of our announcements, and uh, I've been sharing our links to all the projects we've done and what we're going at. Uh, my Instagram was uh, called That Film Dude, uh, so uh, you can follow me out there. And uh, yeah, the, that's pretty much all we got right now. We're working on a website where we can sell merchandise and all of our Blu-rays. Uh, for all the films coming out, because we're going to have three films out by the end of the year. Uh, I'm... Don't, don't forget the lads on the slab here. <laughs> oh, no, no, I got you. I got you. I'll have you on my list of free copies to send out. So, <laughs> My man. My man. Um, but yeah, as I says, I'm looking forward to this now. I haven't had the chance. It's not often we have um, guests on where we haven't seen any of the work, but um, from how passionate you were talking about them this evening, I'm certainly looking forward to what's out and what we're going to get a, get a hold of throughout the year. Um, and as it says, I love anything to do with the Windigo. I think it's a it's such a diverse subject that movies don't seem to get right. Yeah. Um. So we'll 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 give this one a bash now when it comes out. Yeah. My problem with Hollywood is they always focus on like the cannibalism as a literal thing, and um a lot of the indigenous people I talked about, they were like, it's not always a literal thing. It's, it can be a metaphor. And that's really what this movie is about is YouTubers. And what do they all star for is attention, likes, follows. That's what they star for. 
So the Wendigo is able to use that against them in the movie and just start warping everybody's mind. So it's not really a realistic, cannibalistic kind of thing. It's it's more so you're starving for attention, starving for power. Oh, I mean, it's a different take on it. But um, I'm certainly looking forward to that. And um, I'm going to go and give the other ones a check out now over the next couple of days. And we'll, yeah, get, the, uh, we'll get an episode of They are here. Uh, that is the concept for the film that we're making next week. We're making it into a bigger film. Uh, the short film, we filmed it in a day with no budget, no script, and then it got so well received. Uh, I hired a, a writer and everything, and we're like, let's make it into something bigger. So <laughs> Awesome. Um, but yeah. I, uh, as we said, it's been, it's been a very fun chat here tonight. Um, Daniel? Yeah, no, I, I commend you, Jay, on your uh, on your work and your passion. I mean, I've not seen any of your work yet, but uh, you know, if it if it's anything, to, you know, if your if your passion is anything to go by, well, then I'm I'm gonna find it very enjoyable. Um, and fair play to you. At the end of the day, I always like seeing young aspiring writers or people that want to create something. Um, you know, do it by their own, do it on their own terms, I suppose. And uh, yeah. I like the idea of your your. Um, you know, your research and going and speaking to natives and stuff like that. I think it's pretty, pretty cool. And um, it's, it's, it's one of those, it's one of those genres that doesn't get touched a lot. So I like the idea of cryptoids because as I said, myself and Greg are very, very into it. Um, even if it is just a little bit of fun. Yeah. And um, so it's been a very fun chat and uh, I wish you nothing but success, my friend. I do have one question for y'all before we do get off. Go um, for it. What cryptid would you like to see be turned into a movie? Dogman. Dogman? Yep, straight up Dogman. <laughs> <clears throat> got, got a Dogman in North Carolina. You know what? I, 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 I would either go with Greg with Dogman or else, because funny enough, for some reason, I don't agree with Dog. I believe in Dogman. I, I, I like the idea of it. I'd just like to see a really good straight up Sasquatch movie a realistic one not one that's just trying to hunt and kill people for the sake of killing people but just a really good fucking movie mm -hmm. you know um, what is that <laughs> you know, so you've, you tell me you've got it I'm, I'm looking forward to it we're waiting alright man um, I've got one question for you though right uh, this is one that we've myself and Carl have started asking guests that we had on. Have you seen American Werewolf in London? Yeah. Have you seen Have you seen the movie Dog Soldiers? Yes. Which one's better? Dog Soldiers. Booyaka! Dog. Fuck you, King! Yeah. <laughs> and me. <laughs> it's, well, yeah. It's, and to it, me, but. it's the best of it. It's the best werewolf movie because it was the first werewolf movie I've seen that actually creeped me out. Uh, the design of the werewolf is so creepy. <laughs> can I can I um, can I flip reverse because I watched it again recently? Are you jumping <laughs> away from American Werewolf? Yeah. Oh, oh King, you're on your own now, bro. <laughs> yeah, I watched it again the other night. I watched it again the other night, and um, I'm I'm, act I'm actually with Jay. I kind of went into it again, looking to see why I was wrong, and it was a uh, yeah. It's, it's the story is stronger. It is, and you know yes. what? It's the dark. It's the it's the the wolves coming from the dark that yeah. really got me because I pack. watched it in the, I watched it in the dark, like in this here room, but with it's any light. And it, what, it's what does it? They made you love all the characters in such a short amount of time yeah. to where you was generally pissed off and everybody was getting picked off. I'm like, damn it, I like that dude. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Especially Spill. So, uh, so, yeah, I can officially say Carl doesn't notice, but it's true. <laughs> I'm not even going to, I'm not, <laughs> we're not even going to put that in the group chat. We're just going to let him listen to this and go, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, but as I said, we were winding down about 10 minutes ago and I had to get that question in um, and I appreciate the question back the, the one back was a good one what would we like to see um, it's not often we get asked yeah. things like that so if you make a movie we want credit for it too 
I got you. I got you. Yeah. If you main, ever, if you ever want to want... hit up the kid here when it comes to <laughs> that crazy shit, trust me. I got lots of thoughts. Well, maybe I can get you to do a cameo for the Bigfoot movie. I'm only five foot nine, so um, <laughs> I can fight him. I can y'all be a can baby stack- one or something. <laughs> I'll just stack y'all on each other in the suit. <laughs> Their babies probably come out at about five foot nine anyway, so it'll be crap. <laughs> uh, what 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 you can do is what you can do is have us on the screen as a podcast live on the show or something. That'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah. Um, but what I'll do is we'll we'll close out the show the same way I close out the show every Friday night. In the words of the great George A. Romero, ladies and gentlemen, stay scared. <laughs>